The universe has as many different centers as there are living beings in it. Each of us is a center of the universe, and that universe is shattered when they hiss at you. You are under arrest. If you are arrested, can anything else remain unshattered by this cataclysm? But the darkened mind is incapable of embracing these displacements in our universe, and both the most sophisticated and the veriest of simpletons amongst us, drawing on all life's experience, can gasp out only, Me? What for? And this is a question which, though repeated millions and millions of times before, has yet to receive an answer. That's all there is to it. You are arrested, and you will find yourself nothing better to respond than with a lamb-like bleat. Me? What for? Ladies and gentlemen, lovers of war, traders of great renown, I, the strategic Indian, bid you welcome to my channel, where our motto is Think, Think, Practice, Thinking. If you like the content, please do not forget to like and subscribe. Also, leave a comment, which will greatly help with the almighty YouTube algorithm. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is the opening episode of our Banished series of advanced uh, gameplay. And we are going to uh, rename our city the Strategic City. And this is going to be uh, following the lives of eight adult exiles and their three children who have managed to escape the Stalinist system. They are on the run from NKVD who actually have followed them right up to this marsh where they currently find themselves. These eight adults and three children cannot go back because the NKVD is waiting for them. Who don't want to enter this mosquito infested hellhole uh, because they realize that lack of shelter, lack of food, lack of clothes, lack of tools shall see their problems solved for them. Now, we are finding ourselves in charge of this colony and we are going to ensure that this colony becomes one of the most strongest trade hubs of the, within the entire Soviet Union. First things first, we uh, are going to uh, pause the game. That's the first step that you do as soon as you start a banished game, you want to pause the game. Uh, I like, uh, of course, to uh, play at a little higher uh, speed of uh, speed 5 initially of course I won't go there I'm going to open up all the stats panel the maps the priorities the assignment of professions so that I can be absolutely sure that I have all the data that I need to take the decisions uh, which we are going to take so we know what exactly is going on where are we short what is following uh, and later this is going to be expanded once we build a town hall. We don't have a town hall right now. So there are a lot of statistics that I can't look at. However, that will be a major priority. First, let's identify the children. So we have Ardeen, we have Kalistan who's seven, and we have uh, Emmy who's four. Now, Kalistan is of course going to be our highest priority kid because as soon as he hits age 10, he is going to become an adult uh, who can go to school. Not an adult, he can start going to school. So if we don't have a school, uh, then he, as soon as he hits 10 years of age and he doesn't enter a school, he's going to spend his entire life uneducated. That's of course something we don't want, right? So for example, you can see we start with other adults uh, each of whom has a story, which I will get into as the series progresses. They are all educated. You start with a bunch of educated people, 1200 potatoes, and you have 20 tools and 20 hide uh, coats, which you begin with. Let's have a look at our environment. We have a very beautiful flat land in the middle. This is a very famous seed, uh, which I used uh, to generate this map. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I believe nine. We have two great lakes over here. 
which are uh, connected to the main river so any uh, trade posts that we put on these great lakes shall attract uh, traders uh, although it depends whether uh, the coastline is very hilly so i don't know if i'll be able to place somebody maybe yes maybe no however we have large tracks of the river as you can see over here uh, where we have possibilities of putting down trade this is going to be a trading powerhouse we are going to build a very capitalistic society which is just going to dominate and be a beacon of trade and commerce which is going to completely show the shortcomings of the soviet union we are going to show how we are going to use capitalism to stay within this uh, great socialist system and work better than the command economy now we have got a lot of hilly area which we can't build on we haven't used any overhaul mods only the, the only mod i have is a little bit of flattening of ground and an infinite um, ore mod not that important because yeah we are not going to use uh, mines and so on and so forth so our initial job the very first job that we have at hand is to ensure that we build a school for these kids school is school that's the take-home message the very first uh, building that you build in banished in any and every run is of course going to be a school so i'm going to put down a road network my game is paused and it shall uh, remain paused uh, unless I, uh, by mistake, uh, press uh, it away, uh, which I'm going to do. Uh, I'm not perfect. So let's uh, try to find out a nice place for a school, which is quite nearby to their starting point, And it's going to be near two forest hubs, which we are going to build. The extent of these forest hubs are going to be given by this market, which I'm going to put down. So again, I am not building any buildings. If you look at the professions, it says zero builders for zero buildings. So none of these buildings that I'm going to place down are going to be built up as soon as I unpause the game. That is a very, very important tenet of this game. It's very important. Your opening steps are going to ensure victory or complete defeat. So we put down a market to see how much the range of this market is this is an approximate uh, approximation because i have to make sure that the forest hubs which are covered by this market is within its range of course the production buildings does not necessarily need to be inside this uh, market circle right so i can move the market later on what it needs is that all the support buildings in terms of houses where the labors of uh, these particular production buildings are going to be housed all of those houses have to be within the market circuit at least one pixel has to intersect sometimes you can be a bit off it doesn't matter it's not the end of the world now this is what we call a forest hub so there is going to be a forester there is going to be a um, gatherer, a, a, a hunter's uh, hut, and of course, a herbalist with, of course, accompanying uh, storage. So the whole point of Banished is that you have to minimize the walk distances between your place of residence of your, um, of your citizens and the place of their work and storage so you or if all of these things are nearby to each other then you are basically winning the game uh, there are also other things which help them uh, make uh, their job uh, much better we'll get into that so i'm just using the market at this point game is paused as you can see it's zero builders for zero buildings i am not building anything now i'm going to put down five houses which i'm going to slowly increase to six i'll get into why i'm going to build six houses for the forest hub so we put down these very pretty houses you can choose uh, whichever houses you want to put you can have the entire colony with a single kind of house uh, later you can uh, increase that 
So as soon as we put all of these houses down, we have to make sure that all of them are paused again. We don't want to begin the game yet. We are very, very far away from uh, beginning to build up. In this episode, all we will manage to do is to get the first forest hub running. That's it. The first forest hub is going to start running. Now, I'm going to lay down the foundation for the second uh, third and fourth forest hubs so I'm looking for the best place for the house as you can see these this is beyond the circle uh, of coverage of the market therefore uh, I will have to probably move the market while making sure that the first houses are still reasonably within range of the market so here I go and choose a different kind of house uh, and then I put down six houses because here I have the facility of putting down six houses in the first forest hub because the uh, the 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 storage uh, cart on which we have potatoes and tools which we stole from the NKVD they don't even know that we went ahead and did that uh, we had a very brilliant idea uh, where they said that, hey, you know what we need? We need some food. So they stole this uh, bunch of potatoes and made off into the swamp. So here is where we found ourselves with one cart, a bunch of potatoes and a dream. Now, I'm going to readjust my market so that I can bring all the houses that I have up till now into my purview. Every house is more or less uh, at least one pixel in common with this new market placement so be prepared to uh, put down buildings remove them and replace them and iterate a couple of times then you will get this perfect uh, little uh, pinwheel of uh, forest hubs that i'm going to build around the central market this is going to produce a gigantic overabundance of food and of logs which we are slowly starting going to start to trade now, I'm trying to look for where I can build my third um, uh, forest hub. And here we run into some problems of some uneven uh, ground. So here I am, of course, a little bit tempted to flatten the ground with the mod, but I won't do that unless I have a very, very perfect uh, square or a rectangle. And then there is one or two tiles which make uh, it difficult to uh, yeah just stops uh, the formation of a very symmetrical uh, beautiful building so we won't flatten grounds uh, willy-nilly i'm not going to flatten gigantic mountains that also preserves the difficulty in this game now, here goes the footprints for uh, all of the buildings that we can put down and of course, there are some buildings which we can't because of the land. And we are going to put down additional houses uh, a little further on. And we go ahead and pause all of these buildings. I will be using roads as a marker. And of course, I'm going to delete all the roads before I begin playing the game, because once you do that, then what you have is the traders, uh, sorry, the builders are going to simply go and start building these roads and they will leave this little cocoon of uh, starting position where they are at. And then what I will have is that uh, my builders and my collectors uh, who are going to cut down trees and rocks and iron are going to scatter and that's something that I don't want. I want to make sure that they're all bunched up, uh, ready to go. And uh, everybody is at the same place and uh, available for the job at hand. So here I'm trying to line up uh, the houses because I like symmetry. I'm a min-maxer at the end of the day, but I also see the beauty of symmetry. I do understand um, that symmetry does give a lot of beauty although uh, if given a choice between these precious pixels of a very large amount of food very large amount of tools that also gives me a joy on its own for which i am willing to sacrifice symmetry in the worst case now six houses again 
uh, we will get into why six houses all of that was going to come so stay tuned if you are watching banished uh, and uh, this is the beginning of banished so let me tell a little bit about my channel um, as it says in the opening intro that it's yeah lovers of war and traders of great renown so i am essentially a total war uh, attila player uh, where I am doing a challenge which is uh, not done in the English speaking world. It's done by one Russian uh, amazing player uh, and I um, am the only English player who is uh, able to go in and do uh, such a challenge which I am quite proud of. And I do uh, fully planned cities so I also built the first prehistoric city of mankind whereby I used uh, pre-planning to ensure that I can build a city in Dawn of Man, uh, another fantastic game inspired by Banished because Banished is always the father or the mother of all of these uh, survivor city builder games. Um, it is that influential uh, whereby I go and build the first uh, prehistoric city of mankind. So that is uh, what this channel is about and my uh, view is that if you are here to learn about the game i should only talk about things that i know everything about and banished is a game i know considerable amount of uh, and that has happened through my readings on the internet on the reddit on all of the forums uh, that have been there i have followed this game since its inception way 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 back when i was a first year uh, graduate student in chemistry uh, till the time I was a PhD, even while writing my thesis, if I had to go and unwind, it was always banished. So the tips and tricks are going to be verified by the com uh, by the community of this game. This is the collected knowledge of the community and of humanity, which is going to be brought together. So you won't have me uh, building things willy-nilly without a plan. This is going to be, um, this is of course inspired by, uh, for example, uh, Honeywell, who had an amazing series from which uh, I really learned a lot from her. I learned a lot from uh, Mortal Spum, uh, Smurf uh, from the Reddit of, uh, of this uh, great game, a great community, uh, everybody helping each other out. So all of that knowledge I could bring in and then uh, that is what we pass on. I had pressed uh, the unpause button for a sweet hot second, so I apologize for that. Uh, the It comes from force of habit that, uh, you know, if you don't pause the game and you try to move across the map, it really moves very slowly. And then uh, you instinctively press or unpress the uh, the pause button and then uh, the, the, the frames move, move much faster. Um, you know, this is an old game, so yeah, I shouldn't have uh, problems of rendering it at high quality and high FPS. But uh, yeah, that's just a force of habit which forced me to just click that uh, unpause button. So they went ahead and moved around a little bit, trying to construct uh, this and that. But okay, I saw that, corrected that. Make sure you don't do that. Now, we still have zero buildings and zero uh, builders required. That is because we still haven't paused any of the uh, buildings. The first building we are going to build is, of course, the school. The school, the school, the school. Always the school. If you have uh, some children who are uh, very close to 10 years old, so 8 years old at the beginning of the game, or 9 years old, uh, then there is very good chance you won't be able to build the school and get them into school at age 10. All the, all the children are going to begin to enter school when they are age 10. Now you might be thinking that hey if they are age 8 and I have till age 10 to put them in school I have two years to go ahead and build the school for them. However that's not the case entirely in case of vanilla uh, uh, banished the reason for that is one banished year is actually 
three years for these citizens so they are going to age three years for every year that you pass in the game as you can see in the top left it says early spring and one so this is the first year uh, by the time i go to two all of these guys are going to age by three years so i would have to make sure that Kalistan has a place to go and study before he eats, uh, hits age 10. Before that, he will be playing, he'll be able to do simple tasks, and that's why I'm going to put him in school at the very last moment um, so that he can help out in the community. He can, uh, and also it frees one of my adults uh, from becoming a school teacher whereby he can go and do gathering and other things. Now, I'm putting out where the intersection of my forest hubs are uh, and in that area where they do not intersect, that is where I'm going to start chopping down the trees and uh, stones, uh, especially trees because forest hubs uh, rely on trees so you don't want to cut down any trees within these uh, circles within the forest hubs. It would be advisable to pick up the stones and the iron on the ground. Because if you pick up a piece of iron or a piece of stone from the ground, then you will have um, a tree which can be planted over there, which will give uh, roots and uh, which will allow uh, wild uh, um, uh, stuff to grow under them, thereby increasing your food production through the gathering uh, hut. So be careful not to give them a lot of tasks. So I'm going to increase the speed to 5. Uh, you know, veteran players, they go at speed 1. I uh, I can't. I, uh, I can't. I tried it. Uh, uh, it's too hard. So, yeah, I don't play <laughs> at speed 1. But I've done this so much. Uh, this is almost muscle memory for me. Just like when I'm playing the um, uh, Dawn of Man, uh, it is muscle memory. When I play um, Total War, for example, then it's not muscle memory because then the AI uh, really thinks on its feet and Attila Total War is one of the hardest AIs uh, made in this entire franchise. It's a phenomenal game and uh, what my challenge over there is to play as the Western Roman Empire which is beset by problems from every direction, uh, doesn't have any money to speak of, uh, doesn't have any armies to speak of and what I do is I go and declare war on every faction as soon as I see them. I do not conclude any peace with them. I don't burn away any of my territory so that I can just defend my core rich territories and then, you know, eventually make a gigantic army and move out. I don't do any of that stuff. So, of course, there I'm very competent. I know what I'm doing. Similarly, in Banished, I know what I'm doing. Although, I will confess that in this episode itself I made one really silly mistake which gave me a near heart attack uh, but yeah pro player so they have done their first feeding they came back and ate some potatoes they start with 1200 potatoes and they ate 200 potatoes so that is of course what is it uh, because we still haven't started any production but of course we are going to be able to hit production uh, before uh, we need to actually begin now we are going to finally open the school up for construction we do that only and only when all the material required for building the school are right next to it so you can see uh, there is a stockpile this brown patch of land on which I have more than 50 wood, 16 um, uh, stone and 16 iron which you require for building. So you can see how quickly the tunes are transferring them. Here I go, I slow the game down to show you um, how quick this process is and there we have laid the foundation. And now the two people who are builders, wherever they are, they are now going to come and start construction of this uh, first build. The reason now you can see that I'm still on year one, but all of my uh, children have aged by one year. So Kalistan is now eight years old. He's no longer seven. So, so three uh, years of banished is equal to one game. Both the builders are on the job. They are constructing as far as uh, uh, as fast as they can, 
and I am going to keep uh, this uh, statistics of the school as well as Kalistan up so that I can put him into school at the very last moment. This is it, the first building, school is cool. This is in line uh, and uh, with um, uh, strictly in the middle point of both of the forest hubs. So all the children which are going to be residing in these houses which we are going to build are going to have a very nice place where they are going to go and study and then they are going to go back to their homes to rest up. So the way schools work, how do schools work in Vanished? What you have is a teacher who actually performs a unit of work whereby he goes to the school from his house. So if you are placing the school very far away from his or her residence, then that walk distance is not work that is being done. So all of that time is wasted. So I have the house right next to the school. There, we're building our first house, but the the second building that we build is a gatherer's hut, which is going to make an enormous amount of food for us. So this is the gatherer's hut. We are going to assign four people. That leaves two laborers, two builders, and three children who cannot work and who will go to school when they hit age 10 each. Now, why do I need to have the schools near to the houses what the children do is that they go from their houses enter the school and then they run in circles around the school so they walk around the school and that is their education it is a socratic method whereby the teacher is inside the school the child is working uh, is walking around in the open unsupervised and that is apparently education but what education are they getting they are getting the education that communism bad so that is a very simple thing which they repeat for eight years, uh, seven to eight years, which it takes them uh, to get educated, communism bad, and then they figure that out. And that is all that we need to do. Now, we have built two houses and we shall build a bit more because uh, we have got uh, capacity in terms of uh, wood and stone to build these houses. We have got, as soon as houses are built, Two adults, male and female, shall move in. Unfortunately, this is uh, not that progressive, so there won't be two males and two females adults uh, cooping up inside the same house. They have to be male and female. I don't support it, but that is how the game works. And then they will make children, and they can support three children per house before the. Unless, of course, you don't have any houses, then yeah then they get thrown out on the streets i guess but three children per house but since we are min maxers because this is a very efficient uh, gameplay series i shall ensure that as soon as they have three children uh, they, they i don't have more in a single house and i can move them out into a better life for their own houses whereby they will raise anti-communist children who are going to go out and spread the words of capitalism we shall next build the barn storage. Now, uh, what happens is that stuff, so all the food, the tools and uh, hide and uh, finished products are always stored in barns. And what they will do is that if you don't have a market, you would have this guy who has her, who is housed in a particular house, housed in a particular house, is going to go from his house if he needs supplies he's going to go to the barn pick up whatever he finds in the barn bring it back to his house no mercy so this is pure capitalism nobody cares for the next guy this is not socialism they'll go over there grab whatever and come back uh, if there is 200 meat and that is the only 200 meat in the colony uh, they don't care they're going to bring it back to their house when you have multiple houses, if you have in case you have only one house, if people are hungry, they will go to that one house and eat over there. But if they have multiple houses and you don't have food in your uh, in a particular house, then they are going to come back to their own house, find no food, and they're going to starve to death. Because Stephen there has taken all the food and put it 
in his um, in his house and they cannot access it same goes for uh, firewood so in the beginning i don't care if uh, other houses don't have firewood because if one house has got firewood they can still go to that house and get wood doesn't work for food now we have more or less the the first uh, district planned out we have plenty of wood which we can still chop down so i won't uh, bring my um, ah very important uh, you, uh, it slipped my uh, eyes i made sure that kalistan has become a student so i assure uh, i put one person as a teacher to ensure that kalistan goes to school as soon as he hit 10 years of age and that is exactly what ha has happened and now kalistan has begun to get educated he goes to school every day walks around completely unsupervised learns two words comes home and yeah apparently that's education i'm going to remove this storage cart because i will require six houses and uh, often i don't want uh, so i would like to put the house where this particular storage cart is uh, because i don't want to put the house further away from this forest hub everything is going to be minimum walk distances that's the whole point of this game so deconstructing uh, storage carts is a bit funny uh, because one it takes a long while to do even if they don't have work to do it really takes them quite a long while you can see i already gave the uh, command uh, long ago but they could build houses they could build schools they could build gatherers hard far faster than they could remove uh, this cart and these people are so intelligent that they can't push the cart which has got wheels on it from point a to b so that they can uh, reduce their walk distances they they are they are really smart so they can't do that now right so they are just going to pick up things walk from the storage cart to the barn now once you put the storage cart down for demolition you shall not be able to access the items inside it so if you had 50 tools and all 50 of them were in the storage cart and you pressed the button for deconstruction of storage cart until those tools are moved either into a house or a storage barn then you won't be able to access those 50 tools so you might have 50 you might have 5000 doesn't matter as soon as they run out of tools if that all of that is inside this building which is getting deconstructed the storage cart you shall not have access to them so that's blocked off now we are going to start building the forester lodge because i don't like to cut uh, trees i want to assign somebody to go ahead and cut trees for us so i'll put down orders for a little bit of uh, tree cutting because this early i won't be able to have a steady supply of trees so i will have to go ahead and uh, cut down trees myself always make sure you cut down trees from outside of the forester's lodge uh, uh, radius of the forester's lodge and uh, with the cancel removal button you cancel the removal of really small trees because they have not matured and you get far more wood if you cut down uh, that uh, same tree once it has matured than when it's a twig so you perform work get nothing out of it so that is what we want to avoid and banished you want to do productive work You can see on the screen right now how much food the gatherer's hut is collecting. Why is it collecting so much? First reason, it is of course a very large area which you are giving over to four people to manage. Uh, which looks phenomenal in the beginning that hey look um, how much food uh, is being made by the gatherer's hut. But ratio wise that's not so good. Uh, I would say it's one of the worst for the amount of area that you uh, have to give it the amount of uh, workforce and the returns so we are going to get into far more profitable means of gathering food now you can clearly see how the forester works the forester uh, if we center the view on him or her goes around in a concentric circle around this keeping the uh, forester lodge as the center and it goes and plants down trees as um, 
it sees fit. So empty space, it'll plant. If there is a stone, it'll try to cut off that piece of stone and carry it back. That's why often you will see that your forester has collected stone and iron. So they are going to plant, they are going to cut down mature trees, not, not uh, young trees. They're going to cut down only mature trees. Uh, and then you are going to develop a very dense jungle around this forester's hut and that is what we are going to take advantage of with the gatherer which is placed quite close to the uh, forester uh, lodge so all this place which is nicely wooded is going to generate a lot of food and the gatherer is also going to join and uh, create a lot of food because we have placed his housing nearby and we have placed a storage facility nearby. Storage facility, a housing, production building. Close together. That's it. Now we are going to bring uh, and construct this uh, new house. So two more people uh, have moved in. Let's talk a little bit about Dentonia and O Odalnit. So these two are actually very interesting folks because we have a story on each of their lives. So what happened to those guys? Why are they special? Why are they on this train? Where were they? What did they do? And how uh, they are going to bring their particular skills into this uh, world of ours. So Dentonia was uh was having a very nice life until one day he thought that you know the picture of stalin hanging on the wall of her school looked a bit stern looked a bit sad hmm not 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 the great leader the great leader should be happy he looked stern in this picture so she took out a little lipstick which she had, this poor little girl, she, her mom had got her a very nice stick of lipstick and she drew a little smile on the portrait of the great leader, Stalin himself, on the picture which hangs from the wall of every school building in Stalinist Russia. Ten years in the Gulag. I bet she's never going to draw circles and smiles on the faces of the great leader ever again. That is how cool that system was. That is how cool that system was. A little girl was a threat to a country which had nuclear weapons towards the end of Stalin's reign, which beat Nazi Germany, was scared of a school child drawing a smile on the portrait of the great leader. Well, they have a house now. They is nicely paired up and uh, that is a really nice uh, a new beginning let's just put it that way and two children have also moved in with them these children also have stories and in uh, episodes coming we shall unravel these stories we shall find out who they were what heinous crimes did they have to commit for the state to righteously put them inside this gulag archipelago this great mass into which 18 million people passed through and yeah we don't talk about it they were scared of a school child with a lipstick yep that happened, that happened. and then they will say you know apologists will say well she knew not to do that that's why the system is so beautiful it taught her not to do that right now story done we are going to continue uh, with the story so i really hope that you enjoy this uh, aspect this is something which i don't think has been done before in banished 
because the game always says we don't know where these banished people came from. Well, here we find out where they came from. What enormous crimes these people have committed to ensure that they get righteously punished after a very fair and open trial. Our uh, f uh, gatherer's hut is collecting uh, a lot of food. Sometimes you might have an unlucky run whereby so your citizens change jobs and they do it quite frequently. So what you might have is a forester who might have cut down a mature tree, has a bit of log, can suddenly become a gatherer. And then he goes, he or she goes and puts that log in one of the inventory slots of the gatherer's hut. And it has got four inventory slots where it collects all the food. Therefore, one of those slots is blocked up and you might lose up to uh, 500, 600 food uh, that year because uh, she wisely decided to put in 12 logs or three logs that she was carrying and blocked up one fourth of the uh, storage capacity of the uh, of the gatherers so congratulations Stephen! you did a fantastic job thank you very much you should go for a gulag for that you should go to the gulag for that now uh, we had a particularly severe winter last time so i'm a bit worried uh, that the firewood is not going to last it can last two years two game years so it should last this um, uh, this year's winter and tide us over but I'm not that confident about it. So I'm going to put down a wood cutter, which is under construction on your screen right now. So yeah, happy story. Happy, happy, happy story. So our goal in this um, gameplay series is to accumulate 1 million food as I said in the trailer and we have the amount uh, that you can see on the map uh, to get that amount. So we'll have to really push ourselves and make sure that we go ahead and do that. Now we don't have any more free laborers because we have used them all up. I am going to also press the button for creation of the herbalist. Because as you can see on the top left of your screen, I have four out of five hearts um, on my citizens. So they are losing uh, health. Uh, and that happens for not getting a proper balanced diet. Balanced diet is very, very important in Banished. So I don't have meat coming in yet. So they are going to lose health. But I have educated herbalists who are going to be able to recoup their health very, very quickly. Uh, so I am going to put down this um, herbalist which uh, I will balance out uh, between chopping wood and uh, collecting herbs for the whole society. There we go, the footprint has been laid down and now we will have the builder which will come over and build. We don't uh, require firewood yet because the winter has not started. Uh, and uh, this particular wooden house uh, still has got in its inventory a lot of um, firewood which will last us uh, we don't need firewood right now but it will probably take off uh, most of the winter but just to be sure we are going to make sure that we build a wood cutter which we have already done we haven't assigned workers to it we haven't uh, begun chopping down wood but we can do that at very short notice by just moving one laborer or one person from xyz job to go and chop down wood anybody can do any work but educated people do uh, much better work and then they do uh, they produce more uh, for the same number of resources so educate your people school is school and uh, very important that we get the school done as the very first building in the beginning of the series of every gameplay series the very first building that you build is the school so our herbalist is also up very nice very beautiful building i am going to now put down one woodcutter to begin chopping down the uh, because you can see our wood firewood is dropping very rapidly we have already gone down to 10 firewood left in each of the two houses the other two houses don't even have firewood that's why you have the ice icon over them that they are unheated so we're going to build up now let's have a look at that 
he put in uh, 10 he used up uh, uh, 5 and we generated uh, 20 uh, firewood so educated people they take one wood and make four firewood out of it which is phenomenal and that is uh, something which we are going to use there you can see three logs that are going to be get put in are going to create uh, 12 firewood and if you had an uneducated person then you would get half of that so if you had put in uh, two then you would just get uh, four instead of eight firewood as you can see they couldn't constantly change jobs so he was a woodcutter then he decided to become a gatherer he might decide to be a hunter next uh, yeah these days man needs many many skills a uh, job market is really tough everybody knows how to do everything Now, as soon as uh, you see that they have created some chopped uh, wood, which you can see on the screen, uh, the citizens will come and pick it up directly from the uh, the woodworking workshop itself, the woodcutter itself, or from the storage. So they are going to go and pick it up and bring it to their houses. And if uh, there is a bit of hoarding that one house has a lot, that's already fine that uh, if your city is not that large, they can always come back to that one house with firewood and then uh, recover uh, their um, heat uh, now you do require that the houses be heated so if you entirely run out of firewood all of your houses run out of firewood your game can end because everybody is going to die of hypothermia it's not like age of uh, uh, not like dawn of man that they can come back uh, to a hut and if it is not uh, heated with logs they can still recover uh, their temperature our hunter has done a bit of hunting. I will get into how the hunter works. That is a very uh, specific uh, kind of mechanism. I'm going to tunnel, uh, put an order for a tunnel through. So I want to have straight lines. As I said, I'm a min maxer. So then a long bridge across this uh, great uh, lake that we have. Let's pause that. Another bridge another tunnel which can go through so i try to keep it in a straight line and then pause that be very careful about buildings you put very far away from your colony because if those are not paused you would have your tunes uh, pick up stuff uh, whatever building materials that require stone wood iron and begin this long arduous march to try and complete that building which will be a death sentence death sentence for that uh, for for that person and maybe even your colony if it is nearby you can still manage but yeah if it is very far away you get into trouble very quickly try to put down a lot of bridges so that you can get from point a to b very quickly of course you can only build uh, right angles straight bridges there are no angular bridges which you can build and banished and then uh, that's a bit sad but that's the way it is also with our uh, second um, forest hub let's uh, put in uh, bridges let's make sure that is paused if there are smaller hills then you don't need to worry about them uh, because they can just walk over those little mounds but they can't walk over um, very big hills so it's better that to tunnel through tunnels require a lot of uh, stone so we are going to get to tunnels much 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 later uh, of course with the surface stone because initially we might have to burrow through things although we have a large amount of uh, free uh, centrally placed area so i don't think i need to tunnel that early on maybe later on so that I can uh, swiftly move forward and backward. Now, here I noticed that uh, while I was building all of these buildings and laying down uh, stuff, uh, increasing my food capacity, I got blindsided a little bit. It happens, uh, if you know me. Uh, I <laughs> All the houses ran out of, uh, 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 ran out of firewood. So, uh, yeah, they, there is right now a chance of the gameplay ending right here, right now. Uh, this guy who says he's a he is of course a pro player can end this game <laughs> so i noticed this i was like oh boy uh oh boy we need to we need to oh no this is terrible uh, yeah 
yeah, I, I, I'll notice it in a few bits. Oh, man, that was, this was very close because right now there are no houses. Uh, um, maybe one house has got a little bit of um, firewood, which is going to create trouble for us because that is going to run out of firewood. There you go. All of them have the ice icon above their heads. So I have run out of firewood. I don't have any in storage, nor have I uh, anybody who's assigned to uh, cut down, chop down firewood because I have made that one uh, last uh, laborer. I have put him as a herbalist. So he's collecting herbs, which you can't burn on a fire uh, fireplace because you need uh, firewood. <laughs> you can't uh, burn logs, which we have plenty of. We don't have any coal, which we'll get to much later on, if at all. We'll see. We'll see. Always keep an eye on your professional uh, professions tab, so that you can always uh, make sure that uh, you can quickly reassign and assign troops. So somebody is uh, very cold right now. Three people are very cold right now. So out of um, these uh, citizens that we have, we have 8 plus 3, that's 11, plus 5 is 16. 16 people can now just die in very rapid succession. So I'm rapidly just chopping down wood, uh, desperately hoping that they don't uh, all uh, die of hypothermia. Uh, so as I said in the beginning of the episode, this was a bit of a snafu. Uh, did, got blindsided while I was talking. And of course, this is the first time I'm recording Banished. Uh, and therefore, yeah, a bit, bit uh, rusty. I'll get better with time. So this is more or less what our colony looks like right now. We have got a straight line of houses. Uh, we have got a forest hub with a forester, with a gatherer, with a herbalist and a hunter, which is supported by six houses. Probably in the next episode, I will go into why we have six houses for veterans of the game. They already know why I put in six houses. All power to you. Thank you for helping me all across these years. Learn the game from you guys. You guys put up all of this knowledge, which really moved up my uh, my uh, my cultural, uh, my, my knowledge on this game up several notches. We're going to give orders for additional houses because um, yeah we'll see how and when we get it built we don't require it per se because i don't so i have put in um, the order for the house to be built but i don't have any uh, workers assigned so all they will be doing is that they are going to put down the footprint make sure all the construction material is over there uh, but they there is nobody to start the actual uh, going ahead on uh, building of that. Now, very momentous event because we are running at speed 5. We have Calistan who has now matured and can work as a laborer. So he got into school at 10 and in 7 years he graduated, which is fantastic. So he got a university level education from a primary school because, yeah, all you are taught is Marxism bad, communism bad. Uh, communism bad is, uh, is primary, secondary is. Com Marxism bad, third is Engels was drunk all the time, so was uh, Marx uh, living off uh, his salary uh, from very rich kids talking about problems which don't affect us anymore uh, and uh, there are uh, people who go ahead and defend those uh, two guys who cause so much human suffering because of their work. So uh, advanced stage it's of course uh, Marx bad, Engels bad, Stalin bad. Uh, yeah, so all of that education is in Kalistan now. He is now a cyborg who is going to be sent back in time to make this place a very nice capitalist society. So what Kalistan now needs is a house. Because he has gotten uh, a full education, he is a laborer. And there is a girl, uh, because Kalistan is a boy, I believe. Uh, and uh, there is a girl who is also 10 years of age. Who will happily move in with Kalistan to begin their married lives. They will start having children a few years later. Um, some say 12, some say 15. Okay, let's stick with 15. They will start bearing children. Th this is a time which is really not our time because yeah, everybody is going to be inbred. Everybody is going to marry when they are 10 years old, not healthy, not supported by this channel at all. Uh, child labor, not supported by this channel uh, by me personally i'm disgusted by it uh, yeah so 
be prepared this is of course uh, a game and uh, the, this is something that the community has a lot of fun with there we go as soon as we build um, the house Calistan female moves in with Enmi who ha is a male 16 years of age they can already start having babies and what we have is that uh, Enmi is not educated is going to con continue his education from the school which is right next door uh, however uh, they are going to um, pair up and begin having children. So, uh, Emni is going to finish uh, his education and then uh, won't require a house because he, he already got a house from uh, from the one which we give to him and Kalistan and therefore uh, we are set for making sure that uh, children are born. Now, this will be it for this episode. This is the pilot. This is the beginning of the struggle of this great colony. We have told the story of one exile. We shall now find out the story of every exile. This has been the Strategic Indian signing out.